I was born here in 1936, and uh, I suppose my main connection to 1916 would be the Moran family. They came from Atai, and it was William and uh, his wife Mary, and uh, he was a tailor. And for some reason, they decided to come to Enniscorthy, and they set up here uh, less than 100 yards away in uh, Church Street. They had a family of uh, six in the family, four girls and two boys. The eldest was Sean. Sean took part in the 1916 Rising here in Enniscorthy. Um, unfortunately, uh, although he lived through that, in 1921, in Drogheda, he was murdered by the Black and Tans. And that was uh, a big shock to the family. They had many shocks in their time here around that period, but that was probably one of the worst. My grandfather, he was, uh, I, obviously I never met him, but he was supposed to be a bit of a character anyway. And uh, he was a tailor, and he set up the shop here in Church Street. And uh, he was, uh, he was uh, one of these characters who uh, wanted British forces out of Ireland in a big, big way. He used to join any association that had anything to do with getting the British forces out. And uh, he also was into a Gaelic league and all the family spoke uh, Irish. And at that time, you have to remember, no schools in Enniscorthy were teaching Irish. So the, um, the main language, I suppose, then in Enniscorthy would be English. And they had to speak Irish among themselves. I remember my mother saying, their main uh, uh, outlet was saying their prayers in Irish. The youngest son, uh, you call him Billy Boy, with William. Uh, he was too young to take part in the 1916. But the four girls, of course, were well up for it. And as I said, my connection would be with my mother, who was Mary. Now, Mary was the youngest of the uh, four girls, but that didn't mean that she was subservient to them. She was very outgoing, and she had her own mind, which proved so in later years. They knew what was in store because this had been building up for weeks and they all knew what was going to happen. They knew coming down there that people could and probably would be killed, that this was a serious uprising. I mean, the uprising just wasn't here in the Athenaeum. It was all over the place. I mean, they'd taken over the station, they'd, they'd uh, barricaded roads and so forth. So it was a big thing. And they all knew what they were getting into. And of course, you know, the British forces, they had a lot of ammunition at their side, you know. So they were coming in here, and I suppose it was a very sombre time coming here in the morning because uh, they didn't know what was going to happen. And they had limited arms, and they weren't going to give up. And I think they were very strong personalities here, you know. And uh, uh, the leaders here were very strong, I believe, as well. You know, so it was, um, it was a very strange time, I would imagine, for them. Uh, there was a, a saying that our father had, Ireland only, Ireland only, you know, and that was, that's what stirred them all on, you know, and uh, it's, uh, I, su I suppose, there were other families felt the same. I was bound to be so many people wanted to uh, fight, possibly lose their lives. So it wasn't just one family, it was throughout the whole place, throughout the whole town. And uh, of course, you, look, you had people, of course, were anti-uprising uh, uh, on that, you know. And I suppose they had their reasons as well, so.